Hey everyone, and welcome to the first Spotlight Cash video of 2024, and the first in a major change for Marvel Snap. Traditionally, the first Spotlight Cash of the season was accompanied by the Season Pass card, and the Spotlight Cash was a bunch of repeats that were already in people's collections, no new card. That meant you only had to worry about the Season Pass card the first week, but now they're actually releasing a brand new card in addition to the Season Pass card this first week. This is cool from a hype perspective, but it does increase the number of resources you need to remain collection complete moving forward. So as free to play players or players who, you know, are trying to keep up with the grind of Marvel Snap's collection, you now have one additional card to collect each month. That makes these videos all the more important because planning how to use your vital resources is going to be essential for your long-term collection success and so you don't want to waste spotlight cash keys where they don't need to be wasted however there's a couple challenges here first of all it's very hard to predict the power of cards in advance to playing them so i do recommend you take a look at like other creators opinions check out discord reddit and other places and discuss with community members what they think get an aggregate opinion let my video be a piece to your puzzle to help you make your choices but also keep in mind that we're we're getting a ton of patches and a ton of OTA changes that are wildly impacting these cards. A perfect example from last month was Celine. Had Celine's basically entire repertoire not gotten nerfed, the card would have been incredible, but instead everything around her got nerfed, which made it fall flat on its face. So a lot changes rapidly in Marvel Snap. With that being said, throughout the week, I try to keep you up to date with as many videos about Marvel Snap as I can, in particular the Snapchat that I do with Cozy Snap. So if you're not subscribed already, consider subscribing to stay up to date with any changes to the spotlight caches and any of the cards there within. With that being said, let's get started with the first cache of the month, and that's Kyra's cache, January 2nd to 9th. If you're watching this video, you have a couple more days in order to pick up this absolutely insane set of spotlight caches, the, one of the first five-star caches I've uh, dropped on my channel. And Kyra's proven to be an absolutely remarkable card, uh, four stars across the board, potentially a five-star card later down the line. Uh, it has elevated any deck that utilizes one drops with effectiveness and six drops as well it has just been a fantastic component to so many different decks in fact it's elevated high evil back to absolute stardom i was playing high evil last month i thought it was being slept on and now it's just absolutely disastrous to play against because kyera protects the sunspot the nebula and the Misty Knight, which provides a ton of value for High Evolutionary. Moreover, if you don't have Aevo, he is an archetype-defining, fantastic card that you have to have in your collection. Absolutely. And Nebula is probably one of the most slept-on cards in Marvel Snap. No one complains about Nebula, but when you look at those stats, it is very clear that it's one of the best cards in the game by far one of the most slept on cards. And quite frankly, it has this control element that I think works really well in many decks, in particular, High Evolutionary, ironically, because you can encourage opponents to play into that location, setting up your Cyclops to have more of an impact. So this cash, an absolute fiesta of rolling here. I recommend it unequivocally. This is the one you want to spend three keys on for sure. Absolutely remarkable uh, options here. Let's move on to week number two. We have Hercules. Now, there's a lot of debate about, about Hercules here, about its effectiveness. Now, first of all, if you're not a move player, it doesn't look like Hercules is going to be like a just plug-and-play style card for any control style list, like even with Storm and like, oh, I can bounce out of Vision or whatever. And yes, that's true, but that's kind of a very niche application. And there's going to be cards that do that better. Like, you're probably going to just want to play a uh, Jessica Jones even on four if that's what you're going to want to do. However, it is worth noting that if you're a move player, then Hercules has some more value. But for me, this whole spotlight uh, week feels like a pass. Werewolf by Night did get nerfed very significantly from his 3-3 to a 4-4, and his win rate and his Q rate has suffered dramatically. Moreover, the best decks that are featuring Werewolf by Night are going to get nerfed in the upcoming patch on Tuesday, which is going to see Annihilus, which is number one shell right now for Werewolf, getting hit very significantly. So that really drops Werewolf's rating. I would even bear, dare to say that he could even be a 2 star card now which is insane because the card has so much potential it has just fallen so hard from grace and then you have howard the duck its stats are actually not as horrible as you would think but it has like literally a 0.2 percent popular like it's not being played at all there's like one person that's spamming howard to give it some decent cube rates ultimately it's a very underwhelming card and it's not the reason why you're rolling for this uh, spotlight cash but if when you get him it's fine he's an ongoing card he's a cheap ongoing card and maybe one day i mean iron lad's an amazing card so you get to peak with the iron lad but at the end of the day you're designing a deck where like everything that iron lad hits is good howard the luck has felt a little weak and perhaps maybe 
just maybe he gets buffed sometime down in the future or by anyone's surprise he becomes relevant but right now definitely not worth it but at the end of the day i think that this week as a whole is a pass moving on to the next week here we actually have meek who i'm actually kind of excited about i think meek's going to be interesting uh, for discard at the very least he's going to have some decent power if you think about what modok can do uh modok in and of itself could set this card up to like a one five or something like that which is pretty good a one six even so there's value to be had with meek now it's moving element is a little potentially problematic because you can't really control where it's going to move and it might be in the spot you want it to be and then it, you discard something and then it moves out of it and you're like oh man i just overkilled that lane or whatever and it kind of sucks but that's what rng does it's going to be a one cost it does have some decent power behind it with a little bit of rng now i don't mind that i think it's going to be okay but it is a very niche application in discard specifically although discard honestly isn't all that bad especially with black knight doing what it's doing but however, we have a Nihilus, and a Nihilus, this feels awful. This was a five-star card two weeks ago, but we have an upcoming nerf that's going to drastically reduce the power of a Nihilus going from a 5.7 to a 5.5. Five. Moreover, the nerf to Werewolf by Night took a lot out of that package as a whole, and now you have a Nihilus like really not running a great uh, win rate, and this is pre-nerf. This is pre-nerf. His win rate in cube rate's already in the tanker, and now he's going to get nerfed even further. It... It's, he's an archetype defining card, but junk as a whole has completely underwhelmed. I still think you should get a Nihilus if you have some extra keys. He's going to be really good at some point in the future because there's no way second dinner is not going to say, okay, yeah, we overdid it here because Selene, junk, and the whole archetype feels completely dead on arrival. But at the end of the day, I do think that a Nihilus is probably worth picking up. But as in, in his current state, he's not very strong. And you have Phoenix Force. They've tried to make Phoenix Force work, and uh, maybe Hercules will be another kind of attempt at it. But at the end of the day, it's been a very underwhelming card. When the combo does go off, it is a winner. But that combo is incredibly difficult to pull off. And in Marvel Snap, you can just retreat and walk away, give them their cube. And at the end of the day, usually it's the Phoenix Force player that will lose a battle of attrition. Uh, so ultimately, this is also a pass week for me. Although I love Annihilus, and I'm kind of higher on Meek than most, Phoenix Force for me just doesn't cut it. Then we move on to January 23rd and 30th. This is a pretty strong week overall. Uh, there's some important considerations to make here. Now, first of all, Grandmaster could potentially be a five-star card. It has the ability to be really remarkable in its ability to reactivate on reveals while moving cards back to the central location. There's a lot of mobility there. Uh, moreover, Grandmaster, I mean, on reveal cards are just good because they're good. And we saw what on reveal cards did for something like the original Werewolf by Night because you just you stack your deck with them and then he's bounced around and your on reveals are always making some magic happen and i think there's going to be some incredible combo uh, potential with grandmaster however it's the other two components that raise some questions first of all loki was a five star card up until now and i'm still keeping him as a four star card as of right now we have not had the planned nerf happen however it's worth noting that he's going to change very drastically with the way he transforms cards in hand that is going to have a legitimate impact on his power level however i still think that second dinner ultimately wants loki to be a viable archetype it's just so damn fun they just don't want it to be so oppressive at the high end but as you can see his win rate is pretty good at 54 percent and a decent cube rate that should go down with the changes however he's an archetype defining card that you probably want in your collection and at some point he's gonna make his way back so i think it's worth taking a shot at loki then you have hit monkey hit monkey's in a bit of an interesting spot here because he used to be one of the best cards in the game, got nerfed into Oblivion, and then now has only found himself in these pocket metas where heavy-handed combo decks become uh, front and center. Unfortunately, Leech is wreaking havoc on the meta, and so the result is that you can't hold on to turn six to do your big combo play, so a card like Hitmonkey loses value. Statistically, it's a little weak. It's also a little weak in its rating. However, there's going to come a time where you're going to be happy that Hitmonkey is in your collection. So if you want to roll for Grandmaster and Loki, I wouldn't be too upset with pulling Hitmonkey because, as I said, there's going to be a time where his uh, he gets to shine once again. Moving on to the next week here, we have January 30th to February 6th, so the tail end of January, we have Beta Ray Bill. Now, I'm a little lower on Beta Ray Bill than others. I do think the opportunity to double his power is significant, but he's also coming out at a four cost. So what kind of cards are you using to kind of buff him up? Is it the classic Sebastian Shaw situation where you're running Okoye and Nakia, which are suboptimal cards for their costs, just to try and get a big Beta Ray Bill, I guess? It's also notable that Stormbreaker does have an additional power on Mjolnir while having 
having no additional cost. Lockjaw has been getting a lot of love lately and Lockjaw decks are definitely on the rise. So Beta uh, Ray Bill should benefit from that. But I'm coming in a little skeptical with Beta Ray Bill. Although, honestly, I can see him definitely being a three or four star potential card with given how powerful some buffing mechanics can be, even just as simple as something like a Forge into a Lockjaw play. Then you have Galactus. Now Galactus's win rate and cube rate is completely in the tanker, but it is a big bat. It's never dropping in series. And although it's not as competitive as it used to be, it's definitely a card you want in your collection. That's what keeps the star rating up. It performs like a two star card currently, but at the end of the day, it's Galactus. You're gonna want it in your collection, raising its profile by one additional star to a total of three. Then you have Elsa. I, oh man, there's no way Elsa gets to January 30th without getting buffed, right? Like the card feels awful. The, the stats don't look that bad, but it feels awful to play considering what it used to be. I might, I, I'm going to make a prediction here. I could see them moving Elsa Bloodstone to a three cost and once again affecting all the lanes again. Uh, I don't think they're happy with where Elsa is. I don't think anyone's happy where Elsa is, to be honest with you. It was a former season pass card and it's in the tanker, which I've said like five times today. But the, a lot of these cards have been nerfed over and over and over again, which has made these types of videos difficult to predict in advance. And that's why I said at the beginning, it's important you keep up the date and keep kind of tuning into the Snapchat and other things because things are rapidly changing. But for me, this feels like a bit of a past week. Beta rebuild could surprise high in terms of potential, but also I'm really hoping gets buffed because as of right now, you just you just don't want her, honestly. And that is the video for today. I hope it was helpful. So hit the like button if you haven't hit it already and if you like my content. But moreover, I hope to see you in the next Marvel Snap video.